friends welcome to my channel and welcome to yet another video in the UGC net paper one series this is a free video series that I'm running on my YouTube channel for all the UGC net aspirants who are worried about their UGC net paper one preparation in this video series I'm looking at each of the units of UGC net paper one as per the new syllabus and I am giving you all the important informations uh, that are important from net point of view on each of these units so I am not only looking at all the subunits subtopics they have mentioned in the paper one syllabus but I'm also giving you detailed information about what kind of questions you can expect from each of these topics so let's begin by talking about paper one teaching aptitude unit we have already made two videos on teaching aptitude in which I have chronologically uh, completed six important topics which were listed in the syllabus in this video I'm going to begin with another topic that is a part of the UGC net syllabus which is theories related to teaching aptitude now this topic that is related to teaching models and theories is a recent addition in the syllabus and through this topic the UGC net uh, wants us to understand different theories so that we can apply when we are teaching our students after clearing this exam one of the most important theories which have been asked frequently in the net exam is the theory of multiple intelligence given by Howard Gardner I have already told you guys that I used to take soft skills classes and I was also a counselor when I was studying psychology during my graduation. So while I used to do counseling, uh, we used to use a test which will help us to understand where is the intelligence of this particular student. See, we all believe that a person who is good at maths, who scores really high percentage in exams, he has great IQ, he has an above average IQ. No, that's not true according to Howard Gardner. Howard Gardner says that even a football player who is pathetic at studies is having uh, intelligence in a very different way. He is blessed with a different kind of intelligence and a person who scores really high marks in a mathematics exam is blessed with a different kind of intelligence. So according to Howard Gardner, there are eight kinds of intelligence in general. I'll give you a small uh, example of the same. If, while I uh, was doing this test on myself, I found that I was really good at the visual and linguistics intelligence. So I was very good with verbal linguistic intelligence. I was able to understand new words very quickly. I was very good at communication. So that was my domain of intelligence but I sucked at maths I was never able to understand the subject later I realized that it was because my verbal linguistic intelligence was higher and my mathematical logical mathematical intelligence was not so great so verbal linguistic intelligence kin ki high hoti hai there are great writers like Shakespeare who used to use their words in order to write some amazing plays these guys are smart word smart and they are very good at communication writing and everything linguistics so that is verbal linguistic intelligence another kind of intelligence is musical intelligence I am pathetic at musical intelligence if you uh, play rock and pop music in front of me I would not be able to distinguish but a person who is very musically smart he'll be able to understand the slight difference between the musical notes so a person like that might suck at maths examination but he's intelligent because he's blessed with musical intelligence similarly there are great scientists like Einstein Graham Bell these people were amazing when it came to logical mathematical intelligence there are people who love to manage events who love to socialize who love to meet new people make friends go on adventures these people are great at interpersonal intelligence they love associating themselves with people so you look at Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligence and you will figure out that no student according to him is facing the issue of 
lower IQ. Every student has great IQ because some or the other way he has a particular intelligence which is dominating him. So I uh, have this interesting test by which you can understand and you can analyze what is your important uh, intelligence dream. What is the suitable career according to your intelligence. So if you want uh, to do that test by yourself you can WhatsApp us on the number displayed above and we would love to fetch you the sheets by which you can self evaluate and self analyze yourself and see which is the major dominant intelligence stream. Moving on to another interesting theory from which these days a lot of questions are asked in net exam is the theory of classical conditioning given by Ivan Pavlov. As I've mentioned that I was a psychology student and this particular lesson on classical conditioning was something which I understood while I was reading psychology and I used to absolutely love the concept. It's very simple. So there was this scientist Ivan Pavlov, he had a dog, whenever he used to give food to the dog, the dog used to salivate. Okay. Now what happened that after few days he started ringing bell just before he used to present food to the dog. So he used to ring the bell and then give food to the dog. So what happened was that after few trials he saw that just by ringing the bell the dog would start salivating. Why that happened? Because in the brain of the dog food and the bell they started getting in one domain. So they got linked and whenever a bell would ring, he saw that food was coming. So if the bell is ringing, in itself he was assumed that the food is going to come and he used to salivate. This is a very important example that is given by Ivan Pavlov and this applies in case of humans also. Have you ever seen that whenever you uh, deal with kids, that is what we in general use, classical conditioning. What we do, whenever the ch child completes their homework, we give, we give him a treat, a chocolate or a chocolate cake or maybe a gift. So in his image, what is happening is that whenever he does something good, he is rewarded. And whenever he breaks a vase or he does something that is bad, he uh, uses bad words for a person, we will scold him, we will not talk to him, we will either slap him. So in his brain, there's a conditioning that is happening. If you do good, the society is going to reward you. If you do bad, the society is not going to talk to you, is going to scold you, is going to make you feel bad. So this conditioning happens and that is how he learns moral values. So this is a very important theory. A lot of time uh, in net exam they have asked the question that classical conditioning theory has been given by whom and what is the correct definition of classical conditioning. So make sure you go through multiple intelligence theory, you go through classical conditioning theory. I've tried to simplify it as much as I could in this particular video. Also there are amazing theories that you should study beyond what has been listed in UGC net syllabus because there are possibilities that they might ask questions in the upcoming exam. So one of the important theories is Bloom's taximony. I would like you to read something about Bloom's taximony and comment below in the comment section telling me what you understood and if you want my guidance in explaining that to you. Also it would be great if you go through certain social interaction theories where the writers, the scientists tell that we learn through social interactions. So those are also very important from net point of view. In this particular video my intention was to give you an overview about the major theories and why are they important to be studied in UGC net exam. Along with that I would like to suggest you to please subscribe to the channel because the next video is going to be extremely important for all the UGC net aspirants. I'm going to talk about some really, really, really important topics from the module UGC net paper one teaching aptitude. Before you leave this video, I would like you to do three things. Number one, subscribe to the channel right away so that you don't miss out on any new videos that we are uploading. This UGC net paper one series is extremely beneficial for everybody who don't want to read books, who just want 
uh, somebody to guide them on the topics, explain them the topics so that they can save their time and focus more on paper too. Number two, follow us on social media platforms, especially Facebook and Instagram. We are uploading the latest UGC net notification there so that you don't miss out on any new updates from the side of NTA. Number three, if you are looking for past year papers of UGC net paper one, the best way is to go to our website arpitakarva.com. We have uploaded all the previous year papers there with uh, the answers so you can go and have a look and start practicing. So with that note, I'm signing off for this video. We'll meet very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.